All right, good morning, everybody. Appreciate you all very much being here, as you can see behind me. Uh, the power of this city and the power of this incredible department. And let me thank everybody who is here this morning, especially members of the press who are here. In the city work, there's no more important job than protecting the life and the property of our residents. It is a responsibility we take very seriously. And as you can see from the incredible firefighters and the equipment behind us, this is something which the city has continuously invested in. The city council and my administration has made a priority. And we do this every single year to make sure that you are safe and that we can protect our city even as we see more extreme weather as a result of climate change and other factors and a drought obviously continuing. Let me start by thanking our great fire chief, Ralph Tarasas, and citizen commissioner, Jimmy Hara, who's here with us as well. Um, they lead this department, and um, we are blessed to have the daughter of a firefighter and the chair of our public safety committee on the city council, um, and also, also the recipient probably of more fires since I've been mayor than any other a district, Monica Rodriguez, with us as well. Fire season is here, and that means we all have a role to play. This year we're seeing more of the ingredients that fuel fires, that sustain wildfires, high temperatures, dry weather, strong winds. And as always, we can see ourselves facing not just more intense flames, but as we're learning year by year, a fire season that seems to almost never end. Just look at what's happening up north right now, where we see six major wildfires raging, including the Dixie Fire, which has consumed more than 660,000 acres and counting. It's been burning for over a month. It's still just over 30% contained threatening lives and properties, destroying entire towns, forcing mass evacuations still as we speak. There's no question how destructive and dangerous wildfires are, which is why we all need to be prepared during this fire season and each play a role in protecting our families and our city. And I want to assure Angelinos that we are meeting this moment and we're meeting it together with the most cutting edge equipment and technology to protect you your people, your lives, your property. You can see some of that behind me here. LAFD's aerial fleet, which is unparalleled in our country, and the Ericsson Sky Crane that's in the middle, which the department contracts every year ahead of the fire season and arrived earlier this month. The Sky Crane went into service at the beginning of August. It can haul 2,650 gallons of retardant or water capable of stopping flames in their track. LAFD's aerial fleet, which we keep year-round, have exceptionally capable aircraft and the best pilots around. The AW-139 helicopter can cruise at over 100 miles an hour while its 480-gallon tank is completely filled. And this powerful equipment, our incredible firefighters, are making sure there have not been headlines. When talking to these men just before, we heard the stories of the two and three acre fires that have not become massive blazes because of their amazing work week in, week out, as recently as just yesterday. And they're going to be on the front lines, protecting lives and livelihoods. And the members of this department, the most dedicated and hardworking men and women that I know anywhere, I've seen them during this pandemic step up and save lives. I've watched them fight fires as mayor and as council member. And I know they bring everything they have to our lives, to protecting Angelinos and keeping us safe from harm. And whether that's helping stand up the largest vaccination and testing centers anywhere in the country, if not the world, or battling these wildfires that have been increasingly a part of our life. But building a more resilient fire, uh, sorry, a more fire resilient city is not just the responsibility of the men and women who wear the badge. Every one of us has a role to play, and that's our central message here today. If you're a property owner, you can protect your home by planning ahead, taking time to clear brush around your home. This should be a year-round enterprise now that fires are year-round as well. It's especially true if you live in one of our higher fi high fire hazard severity zones, which are in the most hilly and mountainous areas of our city. Beyond brush clearance, it's important you keep an eye out, too. You can be our eyes and ears for this department. If you see smoke or fire in your area, call 911 immediately. I did that yesterday on a hike in Griffith Park when I looked out at the city and saw a fire in the mid-city area. You can use the 311 app if you want to do it digitally for any non-emergency concerns as well. And now, in the event that you or your house are in danger, make sure that you review our protocols for what you can do to keep yourself safe. 
It's ready, set, go. This is the program that walks you through the steps to make sure that you're prepared. Being ready for wildfire starts with that brush clearance that I was talking about. Maintaining an adequate, defensible space around your home, free of vegetation, so that firefighters can stop flames before they get to your house. Being set for the possibility of evacuation before the need arrives means getting organized. Make sure that you have your critical papers or digitize them, then you don't even have to worry about your papers, and valuables ready to grab when the go order to evacuate is given. You'll also need an emergency supply kit for each person in your household and a family plan that includes important evacuation and contact information. Fires don't work around our schedule, so sometimes families are separated and we need to make sure that we can bring those families together. And to stay on top of what's happening, make sure that you're signed up through social media and other ways by following at LAFD on Twitter or going to LAFD.org slash alerts or sign up to receive free emergency alerts throughout not just fires but throughout our city on your phone by texting the word READY to 888-777. And finally, there's the GO of READY, SET, GO. If there's an active wildfire in your area, you don't need to wait for an evacuation order. If you feel threatened, evacuate early. Let me restate that. If you feel threatened, evacuate early. There's all, this is always going to be your safest option. But if an evacuation order is issued, there's no time to waste. You need to go. Change into clothing that will protect you against heat and flying embers. Load your family, your pets, your bags, and your kits into your vehicle and go. Get out of there. Leaving your home when a wildfire is approaching is a difficult and emotional decision. I know for a lot of people they say, I'm going to make my stand, I'm going to stay with my animals, they haven't prepared. It's a moment of panic. But we've also seen these fires in recent years in our city spread by as much as a football field in just a few seconds. So know how quickly these fires can consume your home and endanger your life. When the full force of a wildfire is upon you is not a moment to make a decision. That's when people panic and decide to leave, but that's how many of our fatalities occur, with people scrambling to leave their homes when it's too late. Your home may seem protected. That doesn't mean the street is or that you can get out. I know this is scary stuff, but we have to, as Californians, know these facts, prepare for them to protect our loved ones. The best and most well-equipped and best staffed fire department in the country and our fellow Angelinos who know what the words ready, set, go mean are our best protection. So this is a shared responsibility for building a stronger city, a more resilient Los Angeles. So I'm very pleased to turn this over. I know that we have some Spanish media. I'll come back in Spanish as well, but I always like to share the podium. Um, and I'll, I promise we'll wait till the plane is gone <laughs> to introduce the chair of our public safety committee, a dear friend and a great leader, uh, a member of a firefighter family herself, uh, and our council member, Monica Rodriguez. Thank you so much, Mayor, and thank you all for being here this morning on what is a an imperative message that we need to get out to the public. Because as Californians, sadly, we are all too familiar with the impacts of wildfire. In my district, here in the 7th District in the Northeast Valley, adjacent to the foothills, sadly my district has endured three of the city's largest wildfires. One requiring nearly half of my entire district being evacuated. And these are very real circumstances, ones that families have been impacted by. Thankfully, as a result of our LA City Fire Department, we had minimal losses and compared to many other cities across California. But that is because members in our community know all too well the history and the dire circumstances of when it doesn't go right. We've seen in my district the impacts and complete loss of communities as in Oak Ridge after the Sayer fire. And so rather than repeat history, we're urging the public to please do your part. Because behind me you see millions and millions of dollars of invested equipment. Firefighters that refine their skills so that we can better attack these wildfires as they develop in our neighborhoods and in our communities. But the easiest and most cost effective solution we all have is prevention. Creating that defensible space between your home and many of the brush that is, serves as kindling and can help catch your house on fire. 
to making sure that you do home hardening, making some of the small minimal investments that will protect your house from flying embers going into your attic space and thus catching your house on fire. We need to make sure that we prepare with ready, set, go and making sure that we have all of our important documents together and that we have a family plan. As the mayor mentioned many times, these wildfires don't occur at very convenient times. So it is important that we all do our part to have advanced preparation to making sure that in these moments, in that scramble, in that, in that uh, fearful moment, that we are as organized as we can possibly be so that we both protect ourselves, protect our neighbors, and allow our firefighters to have access to these areas and not be met with a mad rush of evacuations. It's why in my district, a home to a very large equestrian community, I led the overhaul of early evacuations for large animals in equine areas. Because we know how difficult and distressing it is for these animal owners to be moving their, their scared animals in a time of a wildfire. We've been working very closely with animal services to help make sure that those facilities are made available earlier in those emergency circumstances so that you can help get your animals to safety. And so we want to encourage you all that if you are the owner of a large animal, a horse, uh, that you also register your animal with our animal services department because it's important for us to be able to get the information to you and how to safely evacuate your home in these hillside areas if you have equine keeping or large animals in your possession. So with that, I want to thank the mayor and uh, of course our incredible men and women of our LA City Fire Department for always being ready to help protect us in our most vulnerable moments. But it is incumbent upon the public to do its part, to be prepared, to protect your home, to protect your family by doing the early prevention measures that will help keep us all safe particularly those individuals living amongst the high fire hazard severity zones. These are very real circumstances and we don't have a traditional wildfire season. Sadly, we have evolved into a annual daily wildfire season. And so do your part, participate in some of the home hardening efforts that we have available. And I know uh, our department, our, our emergency management department has provided those sessions and uh, examples on how you can do that. Um, please take all the preventative measures that you need to take the time to walk around your home and identify areas that you can help contribute to reducing the likelihood of wildfire spread in your own neighborhoods. Make sure you do that early brush clearance and maintain these properties so that we can protect ourselves and protect our neighborhoods. Thank you so much. Thank you very much. Next, I'd like to ask our leader of our department uh, who has uh, helped lead unprecedented investment in our department. He's a great advocate. We're doing our annual general manager reviews. This will be my last one with him, so I'm looking forward to sitting down with him uh, to discuss that, but he's been a great friend, a great leader, Ralph Teresas. Thank you, Mayor. Good morning, everyone. As we've seen in the news each day, Northern California has multiple large brush fires burning. In fact, the frequency of these fires is outpacing last year's record-breaking season, which saw over four million acres burned. Therefore, it's now more critical than ever that the people of Southern California become prepared for wildfires. Once again, this summer, we are facing a significant brush fire season. But the peak of our Southern California brush fire season is still to come during the months of November and December. As you recall, in 2018, the devastating Woolsey fire occurred in November. And in 2017, we had the Thomas Creek and Skirball fires in December. Annually, each spring, we see abundant green grass and yellow flowers here in Southern California. However, due to the heat of summer, these grasses have started to dry out and to turn brown. More dried out grass means more potential for fires to start and more challenging to extinguish. 
When these fuel condi conditions mix with high temperatures and Santa Ana winds, we have a dangerous condition that could lead to large, fast-moving brush fires. Therefore, the Los Angeles City Fire Department strongly encourages the people of Los Angeles to get prepared. To assist with that preparation, there is information regarding brush fire preparation available online at LAFD.org. There you'll find information about our Ready, Set, Go evacuation program, our brush clearance program, and our red flag restricted parking program. We also encourage you to sign up for the free Notify LA Emergency Alert System, as the mayor stated earlier, by texting READY to 888-777. What you see behind me are the helicopters we could immediately dispatch to a reported brush fire within the city of Los Angeles. The firefighting helicopters of a brush response are designed to knock down brush fires as soon as possible so we can limit the number of lives and homes threatened. The LAFD's fleet of helicopters consists of five Type II water dropping helicopters and two smaller Type III helicopters, which we use for aerial reconnaissance and command and control. LAFD helicopters are capable of dropping 480 gallons of water per drop and are available for response 24 hours per day, seven days per week. After the sun goes down, Night operations will be conducted with our pilots using night vision goggles, allowing us to conduct aerial firefighting throughout the night. In addition to the LAFD's fleet of helicopters, Mayor Garcetti and our council members have continued to reinforce public safety by approving a $4 million, 150-day contract with Ericsson for a Type 1 helitanker during the most critical part of the year-round brush fire season. The Ericsson Sky Crane that you see behind me is capable of dropping 2,600 gallons of water per drop. It is staged here at Van Nuys Airport until the end of the year and available during daylight hours to augment the LAFD's fleet of helicopters. This unique aviation resource will provide a rapid assault on any wildland fire that threatens lives and property in and near the city of Los Angeles. In addition, the excellent partnership between the LA City and LA County Fire Departments continues. Together, our two fire departments dispatched the largest fleet of initial attack aviation resources in the United States. A first alarm response to a brush fire that threatens homes in the city or county of Los Angeles can include up to seven water dropping helicopters, one smaller recon helicopter, one helitanker, and two fixed wing tankers, also known as super scoopers. The super scoopers are leased by LA County and arrive here on September 1st for a 90 day period. A new resource we have this year, if needed, is the Chinook helicopter. It's not here today because it's deployed to Northern California to assist with their firefighting efforts, but can be recalled here if needed. The 3,000 gallon Boeing CH-47D Chinook will be available to us on a contract basis through three county partnerships, through, through partnerships with three counties, that's LA, Ventura, and Orange counties. This partnership is called the Quick Reaction Force Program. In total, we'll, there will be three large contractor-owned helicopters available to the three counties. In closing, your Los Angeles City Fire Department is prepared for a busy brush fire season ahead of us and with cooperation from the public through preparedness efforts, I am confident we will be successful in the accomplishment of our mission to protect the lives and property of the people of Los Angeles. Thank you. Thank you, Chief. Finalmente, también en español. Muy buenos días a todos y gracias por venir, especialmente los miembros de la prensa. Este año estamos viviendo altas temperaturas y clima seco, condiciones que puedan conducir a una temporada de incendios desafiante. La buena noticia es que nuestro departamento de bomberos es el mejor en el país y cuenta con el equipo tecnológico más avanzado, algunos de los cuales pueden ver hoy aquí. Estos aviones la grúa y nuestros increíbles bomberos estarán al frente de la batalla protegiendo uh, propiedad y vidas. Pero construir a un Los Ángeles más resistente 
al fuego no es solo responsabilidad de nuestros bomberos. Todos tenemos que mantener, mantenernos vigilantes. Eso significa despejar la maleza alrededor de su casa uh, si usted es un prop propietario. Y si ve humo o fuego en su área, llame a 911 inmediatamente. Para mantenerse al tanto de lo que ocurre, vaya a lafd.org diagonal alerts o inscríbase para recibir alertas de emergencia gratis en su celular mandando la palabra READY al 888-777. La prevención de incendios es una responsabilidad compartida y trabajando juntos con las mujeres y hombres del Departamento de Bomberos, nuestro concejal y el liderazgo de Mónica Rodríguez, el jefe del Comité de Seguridad Pública, podemos construir a un Los Ángeles más fuerte y resiliente. Muchísimas gracias. And with that, as soon as that helicopter lands, this happens every single time. It's LAPD, you know, punk in the LAFD press conference. But hold on one second, then I'll take any questions. Well, we'll take questions. Didn't this happen last year? I think so. <laughs> And we do love our LA PD air units too. <laughs> All right. Uh, any questions out there? Yes, sir. Good morning. Good to see you. Yes. 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 I'll wait for the two things now. It's the best place to do a press conference and the worst place to do a press conference. So um, the question was, how are our residents doing? And I have to say, pretty darn well. But it is like a balloon that will deflate if you don't put oxygen in every single year. We see people, I think we're getting better and better adherence, thanks to both our department and our residents, to brush clearance earlier and more often. We're getting a lot of good tips from people when we see fires, as well as the technology that have fire spotters now working technologically atop some of our peaks that tell us before people are there. Um, but, you know, we also face challenges. Our homelessness crisis is something that fuels a lot of the fires that we see uh, in areas where people are encamped. Uh, thanks to the department, there's a protocol now at the beginning of fire season to go out there and to actually count the number of people that are there, bring loss of workers and others to interact and say this is not a place to be. We can't get 100% you know, of folks out of there, but that's been helpful too. So I think that we're doing pretty darn well, but I think there's always more we can be doing. And, and certainly the vigilance of folks to let us know when those fires pop up is probably what saves lives. We saw that in the Palisades. Uh, we saw, we've seen that in other places as quickly as possible. But I don't know if Chief wants to add anything or, or the council member. Good morning, Steve. Thank you for that question. You know, the first thing I thought of when you asked that was our brush clearance. We have 131,000 brush parcels in the city of Los Angeles, and we get nearly 100% compliance every year. That's a, a, a solid metric that tells me that the people of our city take the brush threat seriously. Um, our department, in addition to that, we have uh, normalized getting ready. I'll wait for a second. Dating all the way back, I'm dating myself, 1961, the Bel Air fire, we developed our brush fire philosophy. Hit it hard, hit it fast. We do that to keep the, the, the fire small, contain the footprint. So with the, the partnership between the people of, of our city that live in the brush area, that clear the property, through our preparedness, through our annual training and our equipment, and then the media plays a big part of this, I think we're all more informed now of the fires going on every day up in Northern California. That awareness is going to help us when it happens here in Southern California. Yeah, sure. What his grade's going to be? Well, I, I don't want to keep the, the suspense. I want to keep the suspense for him before he gets there. We, 
I don't do a grade, but I will say something, and I know this will never make the news. It actually says in the city charter that the mayor is supposed to review our general managers every single year, a practice that hadn't happened. Um, I think Mayor Reardon had done it. Hold on. There we go. Uh, something that hadn't happened in, in decades. I think Mayor Reardon had done it um, in a small way, but when I came in, I re-interviewed every single general manager. Every single year I do that, and every single year I sit down with them. Uh, I think this department has made great strides, but there's always challenges that uh, are before us. Uh, the strides it has made is going from kind of an afterthought in public safety to being a co-equal with our police department and really restoring a lot of the um, of the resources that have been decimated. But this chief has been an innovator. Uh, I want to be very clear about that. It's one of my last chances probably to say this publicly. He's been one of the most creative fire professionals in the United States of America, if not the world. And he's led a team that, whether it was the pandemic, we don't have a health department, but dirty little secret is our fire department is our health department because 90 percent of the calls that our men and women go out on are medically related so when COVID came just the creativity that I saw the mission you know finding 30,000 cones to take into Dodger Stadium and to lead that sort of stuff uh, has been tremendous we still need to continue to make strides uh, always you know in the culture the training the diversity of the department that's something that I've held very near and dear and this uh, chief has been a good ally in uh, but I'll, I'll, I'll wait to uh, tell him private and I'll share everything else uh, publicly. They're, they're, uh, these reviews are a great chance to look at what he promised he'd do a year ago. And I think looking at that, we couldn't have known uh, exactly where we would be. But given the pandemic, this department has made strides, not just in responding to the pandemic, but becoming a better department. Yes, sir. Uh. <laughs> sí. 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 Claro. Sí, sí, sí. Ok, bueno. Los incendios en el norte de California son muy peligrosos y muy grandes. Pero la amenaza es el mismo aquí, en Los Ángeles. Um, tenemos... Uh, bosques aquí, tenemos mucho, mucho, uh, muchas oportunidades por estos incendios uh, uh, a estar en el Valle de San Fernando, en el lado oeste de la ciudad de Los Ángeles, pero la diferencia es nuestro, uh, nuestro departamento. Tenemos la población y un departamento juntos uh, son el, el número de personas que pueden prevenir y pueden parar un incendio es diferente, pero este es el resultado de, uh, del cambio climático y durante esta sequía tenemos un papel en nuestros hogares a proteger uh, los edificios um, para tener un plan ready, set, go, lista, uh, no sé, set <laughs> y, y va, uh, ve. Pero es importante tener un plan por su familia para evacuar nuestros uh, vecindarios durante estos incendios porque es importante salir muy, muy rápido y temprano porque esta es la protección de nuestras familias y nuestros hogares. Gracias. Gracias. Any other questions? Otras preguntas? Okay. Thank you all. Very oh, yeah. One more. Sure. Sure, I'll do off topic. <laughs> you, you guys can be dismissed if you want to, but you can also stay. But, yeah, go ahead. No, I just want to find out. Tell us what's going on with you. When you, when you leave, what's your plan? Uh, still awaiting. You know, that's up to the Senate to uh, uh, go through the confirmation uh, process. So I expect it to be some months still. Um, there's both the Senate confirmation process and committee. And when that's done, there has to be a floor vote. So. Uh, I think the estimates we're getting are kind of towards the end of the year. So I'm looking forward and waking up every single day as, as mayor. Um, I think a lot of people wonder if I'm spending time doing that. I'm, I'm not. I'm, I'm spending time doing this uh, work. Um, as excited, as optimistic as I've ever been as mayor. And um, maybe the only time I've ever agreed with Ted Cruz because he's the person delaying it. But hey, you know, every extra day I can get as mayor, I will definitely uh, improve.